What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at Fightful.com. Here with a name you know. You've heard him here on Fightful before, but now you're going to hear him on the My World podcast. I got to say, I'm very excited about it. We got Jeff Jarrett. How you doing? Good, Sean. I, now, come on. You're not excited about it. Exactly. You talk wrestling all day, every day. I do, but I mean, legitimately, <laughs> like, I have like messaged Conrad multiple times, like when's the TNA podcast coming? When's the TNA podcast coming? Because for years that was like the destination viewing for me. Like that was like the show that I wanted to watch every week. If I had to watch one show, it was TNA impact. So it had quite the impact on me, but you know, it's not as impressive Jeff because my cats knocked it off the wall. But look at this bad boy. Look at this. Look at there you go. Okay, so I was about to say we were talking before we got started. You're from Northern Kentucky. Yes. We ran one of our TNA. We ran one of our very first live events in Corbin. Mm-hmm. Did you? Were you happen to be there? I didn't. I didn't get to go to a wrestling show until like 2010, my mid 20s. I, I never went to a wrestling show. Uh, I actually I wrestled on wrestling shows before I attended one as a fan, and like I, I never got to go to one. <laughs> But I saw this. This was on sale on Shop TNA in the years that you had uh, after you left, and I bought yeah. one. And when my cats knocked it off the wall, my goal has been whenever I meet you in person to have you physically smash it like you do, and then we'll auction off the pieces for charity. There we go. And you know what? With Conrad's already hit me up. We're already talking a brand new guitar because we've had the different iterations through the years. And now we're going to do a My World guitar. They're already in uh, the, the the development, we'll say that. The, that process is already underway. So we're, we're excited. And I'm all kidding aside, you know, we're, we're all connected in this universe, this one of these universes we call Twitterverse. Uh, but no, I, I saw one of your tweets on some different topics, which I thought, that's pretty cool. He responded to Conrad. I'm getting uh, into and a couple of them today. Oh, okay. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna cut him off. I'm cutting Conrad off. <laughs> I love it. No, like, I'm, I, I really am excited about what, it. So. What am I doing here? Taking Bro. taking food off Conrad's plate? I doubt it. So no, he, he's got his plate's plenty full these <laughs> yes, days. Yes, he, he's got plenty. Uh, my heart doesn't weep for Conrad. Great guy, but I am excited for this show. And uh, like it, it, it his his shows generally go in different topics. So I thought maybe we hit a couple of those topics short form to kind of preview sure. what what people might see. Uh, one of them I've always been so curious about, Randy Savage popping up in TNA. TNA was a whole lot of people's like last matches ever, like China, Ric Flair. There's a whole lot of people that had their last in-ring match in TNA. He was one of them. How did that come about? You know, him and my father, and again, we're, we're from the same uh, neck of the woods, as we say in these parts, right? Yeah. But no, uh, Randy Savage... Uh, and I'll say the Pafos um, go way back w- with the Jarrett's uh, back into the seventies and Randy before uh, pre macho man, uh, not long after his baseball days, but no, it, it's no secret that uh, I, 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 I see W what was the name of their promotion? Yeah. Uh, you was, know, I think international I, championship wrestling. Maybe yeah. I think that. Yeah. So they uh, back in those days, they were called uh, as a territory territory war, yeah. if you will, or, you know, uh, the, the term outlaw wrestling uh, was used around. But anyhow, um, when the, the, the when, when that sort of came to a head, um, Randy really expected my dad not want not when they went out of business. But he expected my dad really not to want to do business with him. But it was just the opposite. There was a great opportunity to do business. And so at that time, probably the last person on earth that that uh, Randy thought would want to go into business with him would be. Uh, Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler, but uh, as as fate would have it, they did get into business together and did some record box office at the time, right there at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, Mid-South Coliseum, all around the horn. And so that sort of uh, stage of Randy's career, um, he did his loser leave town in Memphis, and the next thing you know, he's working for Vince McMahon the WWF. So there's a long, long history. Fast forward. Uh, 20 something years in TNA and we just got into Orlando and Randy and my father started to have conversations that, you know, I'd, I'd grown up in dressing rooms and I'd been around Randy and Randy in 90, 91, 92, he had come and done some shots uh, as the macho man. Um, and, you know, that, that, you know, as, as big a star as he was, he came back to quote unquote, the, the home territory. 
Uh, so I, you know, I'd known Randy since I was in high school. My dad had worked with him for years. And then at that stage is, at his career, you, you think about the Macho Man, and, and I don't even know if you really call it a, a last match with all the great matches he had. Yes. But it was maybe one of his last wrestling appearances. But at that time, and, and this is one of those footnotes that, candidly, when me and Conrad get into the real in-depth story, you know, Randy had the, the movie going on, the Spider-Man movie, his acting career. He also had, a lot of people don't know, his rap career yes. uh, th that was going on. So when we get into those kind of stories with Conrad, and me and Conrad obviously have had conversations off and on over the years about Jeff, well, I want you to do it. And, you know, when Bruce came and worked for us, um, he, he was like nudging me in the early days of something to wrestle with. So um, it's one of those things, persistence paid off. Uh, but I'm just glad in a lot of ways that I didn't say yes back then. And now I am saying yes. Uh, but the depths of the stories that we're going to tell, and you said, I appreciate you sort of teeing it up to oh, do yeah. uh, a couple of previews. But no, when we get into it, there's some fascinating stories about Randy and my father and him there that day. And it, it, it's pretty cool. But, but where Randy was at in life, not just the wrestling business, those kind of stories will be told. Yeah, of course. Another thing that TNA was really good at was homegrown talent, and we saw plenty of that. One of those names, Monty Brown, who lives in oh. lives in a bit of lore today because he stepped away from wrestling, really, when he had plenty in the tank, handled some family issues. What did you think when you first saw him? Because I know that he was in there before his big push as well, but boy, was he a natural or what? You know, Monty is one of my... You know, in a lot of ways, uh, one of those what if stories, mm -hmm. because he was really on a roll. I personally really like Monty, but from a professional point of view, the guy could just flat out talk. He had charisma and 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 that finishing move, the pounce um, that, that that was so easy to like, so to speak. It, it, it was just a very, very natural. You didn't have to think and like, how did that guy do that? And how, the, how, how does that guy fall? It was real simple. He's a football player. He knew how to take your head off, and he did it in the ring. But Monty's charisma, um, you know, he, he's something that had he had another year or two, I don't want to put a time frame on it, but a little bit more seasoning, I, I, I truly believe when he arrived at the WWE, the, 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 the playing field would have been different. Uh, I, I think I could say that about AJ Styles, completely respectful. Uh, uh, other guys. That, 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 you know, Monty was a unique talent. The sky that was, with a, it was the limit for the guy, without question. Uh, his former coaches talked glowingly uh, about the kind of human being he was. So Monty's been a, a longtime personal favorite of mine uh, and, and had a lot of fun. And, and we had a couple of good te television matches that did, did a number. So uh, I, I like Monty. And it's not just TNA. I'm sure you'll be talking about you got a robust career outside of TNA as well, <laughs> uh, including fairly recently when you appeared as a surprise in the Royal Rumble. How did how did that come about? How were you approached and how did you react? Obviously, you eventually said yes, but now this could be a, 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 it will be probably knowing Conrad a lengthy podcast. But <laughs> you know, from the Hall of Fame the previous year, and then fast forward 12 months. The, the discussions and um, times lack of discussions and, 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 and I'll say the one-on-one -on -one discussions, but when it came about, it literally, I left uh, the morning. Uh, I just, the, the quick real, I mean, the very condensed version that goes into it. I left my house. Uh, I want to say it was a Friday. Yeah. It was either, no, Thursday or Friday morning. And um, excuse me, was in the gym, got the call and uh, Hey, well, first got a text. Can you talk? Sure. Uh, and so I said, let me finish my workout, went out to the car, took the call. And that was like nine days before Royal Rumble. Uh, I mean, I'm like, you realize that event is next weekend. Thanks for the heads up. I'm glad that I'm still in the gym and ready to go. But no, the, the call came quickly and and the layers that go into it. And then really, quite frankly, what transpired out of that uh, is, is a cool story. And Conrad, uh, a couple of times over the last, I'll say, 60 days uh, when we just touched on different things and had some text exchanges. And I'll say, you just wait till the mic's hot on this one. It, it's wait. one of those stories that uh, it's going to be exciting. I want one scoop out of that. Did you have to get new gear made or did you wear old gear? 
Now, Sean, you are really telling on yourself. If you watched, you would have known that ain't no year. I mean, <laughs> I cracked up. Uh, I'll leave this. When we get to that episode, some comments were made through headsets. And that question was asked. They said, where the hell did he get this? And somebody said that. And then the answer to was, he dug it out of his pack rat closet. I've never oh. thrown anything away. What's funny is that hat. That is the original hat that they saved. So hats off to the WWE warehouse. But no, that hat uh, has seen its better day. But uh, no, that was all original gear. That isn't the only Royal Rumble I want to ask about. Because I've, I've actually been looking for somebody to tell me a little bit about this. You were a part of a Royal Rumble that happened off TV in 94. It was like right before the 94 Rumble. It was at uh, Madison Square Garden. And it was just out of nowhere. Owen Hart ended up winning that. Do you remember like what you all were told about doing a Royal Rumble the week before? You know, no. I, I, I mean, the ins and outs. And I would have to refresh my memory. But I can just remember, you know, back then... Obviously, the world has changed. Um, we're sitting here talking on, on, on a Zoom call and video, and it, it's going to be online in just a minute. But, you know, in, in what was that, 94? Yeah. Um, the, the, the quote unquote, the pay per view was in Providence, if I recall correctly. Yes. But the amount of events we did back then, you know, we were 10 days on, three days off, four days on, three days off. And so it was just a complete churn, and it was another live event that we cranked out. Obviously it was a garden and all the, all, every time you step foot in, in the big apple in, in that arena, it's special, but, but it's like, Oh, wow, this is different. And, and um, you know, like I said, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, but it's a unique story. The, that, that day of the Royal rumble with, with Yoko and it's and Savage. Savage is the one who elim eliminated me and going around and Pat Patterson in the room and him telling Savage walking up to me and said, hey, I volunteered. I'm going to eliminate just all the cool stuff that goes into the making of that match. I've always been so fascinated with that and like how they put that together because you got to manage so many people. And yeah. managing egos in wrestling and personalities in wrestling when you've got a bunch of very vivid personalities to begin with. 30 of them at a time and you got to do it once a year. That's that's what, like, how did you manage it as like, at the show itself when you were producing? Like, did you have any hand in that? Well, I mean, you know, that one, obviously not. I was just a talent. But as we sure. get into the TNA years, and we called it Gauntlet for the Gold, and the ins and outs and the ebbs and flows, and, uh, you know, uh, Chris Park, uh, the Monster Abyss, um, he had a real good mind. There, there's certain guys that, that have the ability to step back and look at all 30 or 20 competitors or 40 competitors or whatever they and that's really what you have to do. You have to take a step back and look at the big picture and make sure that, that like, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one match or a triple threat or a tag or a six-man tag, you, you got to have the ebbs and flows, the roller coaster, as you will, if you will, the ups and downs that, that really tell the viewer, the consumer, uh, the right story. And, and it, it, it's a real fascinating thing that, that uh, I've, that when people hear it for the first time, they're like, I never really thought of it that way. Yeah. And, you know, and, and Conrad, we've had those kind of conversations that that he says, Jeff, you're going to bring a different perspective. And I'm like, I've been around it since I was a teenager. A lot of things come second nature because I've heard it over and over, but it's brand new to other folks. As we wrap up, I, I loved, especially 1999, you didn't see a lot of like great heel shirts back then, but you had a great run of merchandise <laughs> throughout that year between don't piss me off and slap nuts it's like you you had some gear that or some merch that looked like it was selling pretty well. Had you ever encountered anything like that before because that was that was two hits in a year. No, the the, the thing that was real cool that you got to you know, yes there's been catchphrases, but when the attitude era sort of, you know, we'll call it the new generation era, um Brett sort of had his best there was best there, ever. there there was that was really, you know, and, and Savage had oh yeah and Hulkamaniacs, but the the era of catchphrases, especially with heels, wasn't really there. And obviously, Rock took it to a whole nother level. Um, but 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 the slap nuts, how that came to fruition, and don't piss me off. That was that was straight out of you know SummerSlam with, with X Pac or, or, or Sean. Got my hair cut, so it was the, the you know I went from the the Double J persona to to a, to the new persona with the haircut, and just that that don't piss me off sort of encapsulated and I can re remember creative services like 
we love it. And then you get into the ac- action figures. Oh, we can't really put don't, that four letter word. Don't tick me off is what they said on the action there figures. There you go. So so, so uh, the story behind the story is is uh, pretty unique on, on those catchphrases. And guys, you all will get to hear so many of these stories on the My World podcast with Jeff Jarrett. We gave you a taste today, but make sure you check it out. Ad-free shows. I am a, a loyal subscriber of ad-free shows. Truly love it. Conrad Thompson's a great guy. Jeff Jarrett's a great guy, too. Jeff Jarrett, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Sean. Well, as always, we enjoy these chats. Uh, yeah. This went by way too fast. We'll, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, We will have to do it again, guys, and make sure you check it out. Until next time, we're out.